A big thing with the lids, we forget or we don't realize how much the expression um, affects the lids. We think of the, the, the eyebrows, like obviously, you know, when you tell a kid to draw a happy face, you know, they might add in those brows like this, but the lids are just as important. And they need to, to I like to say they support the brows. So you're not gonna be able to like, you know, if you have this, uh, you know, brows like this, you're not, obviously your, your lids, we don't want them to do that as well. Cause that's kind of crazy looking. You know, they're, they're not as nimble as the eyebrows, but we want them to be like inspired by the brows. So be doing similar kind of things. We don't want them to contradict each other. And we're gonna take a look at how sort of that expression is seen both in the brow and the lid. Here we got Flynn Rider being all sort of sad, worried. So you got that, that angle we kind of talked about and then the curl up. So you got that sad angle up, a little curl, a little furrow. And as you can see here, that same angle can be seen in this top lid. Here we have a shocked expression. <gasps> sort of curious. And you can see that shape very similar to the lids, the lids and the brows, very similar. Here we got sort of this crunched in compression shape down, squat down. You can see right here, these lids, boom, same angle. They're both sort of saying the same thing, not in the exact same way. They don't have to be perfectly the same. You, you probably won't be able to get that. Otherwise you'll get these really complicated lids at times, but they're, they're saying the same thing telling the same story. You got this sort of pressed down compression on the right side. And again, kind of same angle pressed down. Nice little arch raised up, arch raised up. So when you're building your expressions, you know, sometimes I like to kind of build the brows and then go in and put the eye, eyelids in and, and use those, the shapes and what the brows are doing is, is like inspiration for uh, my lids. Make sure that they're, they're both expressing the same emotion. Otherwise, we're going to end up with um, with really broken expressions. You know, the eyelids might be saying one thing and the brows might be saying something else. The eye mask, this is sort of how I think of the whole upper face section. It's, it's the whole area kind of like you, you might draw this like Venetian mask or, um, you know, like a raccoon. And I like to use this because when I, I think of it as an eye mask and not as these separate entities and build my expressions out of the eye mask. It keeps things unified, simple, and, and working together. And I know everyone everyone within that eye mask is uh, going to be saying the same thing because they're all uh, built around the same foundation. Um, and this is kind of where you can kind of build that asymmetry. You can kind of squish down one side and stretch out the other side. Of the eye mask, I kind of, you know, just like, we're going to kind of reverse engineer this, but this is how I, I go about building um, expressions. When I'm first kind of drawing them out, a lot of times I'll go in, and you might have started to see me do this when I was drawing expressions earlier on, is I'll kind of think of like it was a really big startled surprise and draw sort of that Venetian eye mask. And now think about, okay, if this was my default, you know, we saw that. How have I changed the outline of this shape? And think about how it's stretched, stretched and maybe even kind of compressed a bit. And that's what I want to do to everything else. So if I'm going in here and I'm building in my eyebrows, they're going to run along that edge that I distorted. Then these, these um, lids and the eyeballs are going to stretch as well. So then now that whole area is working together as, as one unit. You know, if we do the same thing, then we want them to be angry. We want to, you know, thinking about that angry, we talked about it being these angles inward and down. So building that mask is crunching in, being angry. And 
Okay, thank you. Now it's my default. How have I changed and distorted this? My eyebrow, maybe. the outside kind of came up and then down, that crunch wrinkle. Again, we started down and up. Same thing here, we've squished the inner part. So I'm gonna do that. Same thing, I'm gonna push up and push down on that top wood too. And that's gonna give us something that they all, it feels very cohesive in it because I based everything around the same foundation. So here we can see the same thing. We look at this eye mask, it's gotten stretched. Ooh. Surprised, and you can see the eyes, everything, brows, eyes, eye sockets, all done the same. We got this sort of stern, determined sort of look, and that eye mask has flattened out. And you can see how everything fits into that shape. We got our, our sad expression here. The inner parts have come up, you know, and the bottom's a little more default. Hasn't really changed much. And same with those those lids. You can see how they haven't really changed much, but they, all these angles have been pushed and distorted. Cool. And when I'm I'm drawing out eye masks sort of starting out trying to figure out what to do. You know, as I draw them out, I think, how can I kind of like squish one side to get a bit of asymmetry? You know, and is that helpful? Left side, right side. Typically, you know, some people will say you kind of always outward, you know, whatever way your character's kind of looking, that's the way you build your stretch and squash side. But that's not always necessarily the case. Sometimes it's the opposite majority of the time it lands like this so it's like your character is facing this way this side can be a little bigger and this side can be a little more squat it'll help with that eye direction and uh, making sure that your character your audience is looking to the correct side 